Hi, it's Jack here coming at you today from the Abshot Hub here in Titchfield Common. I hope you're all well and keeping safe. Uh, so in today's video, what I wanted to discuss with you is uh, something new that's happening in our industry. Um, and it's called the COVID clause. Um, it's a clause which is being used uh, when buying and selling homes. Uh, it's something that we've never really had before. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, tell you all about it just so that you can be informed. So what is the COVID clause? Um, so to the best of my knowledge, the COVID clause is actually uh, a piece of the contract. It's a clause in the contract when it comes to selling and buying a property uh, in England. And uh, essentially what it means is it means that if somebody um, exchanges contracts uh, on a sale or purchase of a property, um, the point of the sale which is legally binding. Uh, what it means is that the, um, the person that's buying or selling, uh, if they do get COVID symptoms um, or if they're asked to self-isolate, uh, it basically means that they can move the completion date um, to further in the future. Because um, you can imagine, can't you, exchange contracts, it becomes legally binding, uh, and then, you know, heaven forbid, you've got COVID-19, um, your removal companies aren't going to want to touch you. You know, um, you, you, you might, at the worst, be too unwell to move. Um, and obviously, this is a real potential that, you know, this could happen. So, what a lot of solicitors are doing, what a lot of law firms are doing is they're putting into place this COVID clause um, to basically, you know, safeguard against that happening. And it is really just there just to say that look, if the day of completion comes around as agreed and you've got COVID, you can't move, you're being asked to self-isolate, you, you actually have the flexibility under that contract to uh, complete the purchase um, at a different time, probably within a couple of weeks. Um, so hopefully by then you've recovered from any symptoms or, you know, you're not, you know, at risk to other people anymore. Um, the other the other time that it could be triggered, I guess, um, is if there was perhaps, you know, a change in the lockdown. Um, so at the moment, you know, it is what the 23rd of June, um, you know, it looks like we're going to get an announcement possibly today from the Prime Minister easing lockdowns even further. You know, pubs are set to open soon. Gyms are set to open soon. We've got all these things. So the way it looks like it's going is actually, you know, it, things are becoming to come more open. But, you know, in Germany, for instance, they're getting spikes in cases. And, and what that means is, you know, if that happened over here and we started to see a rise in the infection rate, it might mean that we have to go back into lockdown. So again, if you exchange contracts today uh, and set, you know, completion for two, three weeks time and then Boris Johnson came out and said, you know, back into lockdown, that COVID clause is there to protect you against that as well. And what it essentially will do is enable you to kind of have a long stop completion date. Um, again, it's, it's very much uncharted territory, so we don't know exactly how it's going to play out. Um, I'm also hearing that certain law firms aren't willing to accept this COVID clause because it's very vague, um, you know, it's not really, you know, completely, um, you know, nailed down into definitions of what constitutes being unable to move. So there are firms that have just voted to not use it at all. And what I'm seeing now is situations where you're in a chain of three and you've potentially got two people in that chain, two solicitors that are saying, yes, we're happy with the COVID clause. Then you've got another solicitor saying our firm's not doing it. You know, so what are the alternatives? Well, the alternative is to do what we call a SIM, which is a simultaneous exchange and completion. And that basically means that you will exchange and complete on the same day. That in itself can be problematic for people, though, because, you know, you need to make sure the mortgage money is there in time. You know, some people need a certain amount of time between exchange and completion, you know, to pack their houses up. So it's a really interesting time. Um, and I don't really know how it's all going to sort of pan out for buying and selling. Um, all I do know is that I kind of think it's important to have these COVID clauses in the contracts, but I can equally see that it's such a grey area that, you know, when you enforce it, you know, what constitutes not being able to move, you know, and how defined is it? 
Um, so that's it really. Uh, it's not a particularly fun video for you today. We're not looking at any houses, you know, I'm actually in the office, got quite a lot of admin, quite a lot of follow-ups to do. Um, but, you know, what we, you know, what I did want to do is just talk to you about this as I hear it, so that you know, so that you're informed. Um, if you do get stuck and you have got any questions relating to this COVID clause, um, probably best to speak with your solicitor, take legal advice from them. Um, but as always, if you have any questions for me, you can comment down below. Uh, you can direct message me on Facebook. Um, you can WhatsApp me. Um, I'm always happy to help. Always, you know, up for a conversation. So, yeah, that's it for today in today's video. But thank you very much for your watching. Um, please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you want to hear more uh, property related uh, and moving content um, to do with buying and selling homes. Um, but yeah, thanks uh, for listening. Uh, that's all for today. And I'll look forward to